Okay, so we're here with Bob, and we're going to show our measurement process. Now, I just want to talk about how I'm going to do this uh, just a little bit, because if I took a measurement tighter or looser, that same person, the measurement I could say is a little different. So I just want to describe the process and how I'm doing it. I'm just going to take it real loose on Bob, either if it's an ML, so that's a side-to-side -side measurement, not, when I say loose, there's no space in there, but I'm also not squeezing him. I'm just trying to touch the sides, okay, wherever I'm taking our MLs. For the circumferences, do the same thing. I'm not going to pull very tight on the measurement tape. We're just going to have the two ends meet, and then that's what we're going to say our measurement was. And the same thing for the, the height, uh, that, that's a little different, but uh, the same thing for that. We're not going to try to stretch anything or uh, anything like that. But it comes more into play for the MLs and for the circumference measurements here. So we're going to start off with Bob, and we're going to just uh, mark out our landmarkers like we always do. Okay, so here's an orthotist who come in. Now this is if the physician's team allows the patient to be measured in a standing posture. Okay, they don't always allow that, but since Bob He's doing okay, and we're just, you know, this is just, uh, this is for educational purposes. We'll do it like this, and we don't have to worry. So we have this Bob Sterl notch is up here, okay? Um, we could do a nipple line illustration, okay? Now we're going to look for Bob's anterior superior, or excuse me, his xiphoid right here. Okay, so I'm going to come down just a little bit here now. Um, right here, we're going to find the top of the superior aspect of Bob's iliac crests. Okay, this is where an orthotist calls for the waist groove to usually go in a brace. Every manufacturer is different. I can't speak for everybody out there, but every brace company that I've either worked for or any other brace person that I've talked with, uh, usually the waist groove in a brace goes just superior to the iliac crest in the space between that and the distal rib bilaterally okay that's the goal all right so we're going to mark out our waist here and we'll just come around okay so that's our waistline center point because i just connected the two dots okay we're going to find bob's asis which is usually for an adult about two and a half inches to three inches uh, distal to where the waistline is. That makes general sense that my fingers, that, that I have them measured out so that makes sense. And I gotta find uh, the, the symphysis pubis for Bob. Okay, so we have our landmarkers all, all set. Um, so now, since we're going to start off the process in a moment with Bob in the seated posture, we'll do that here. Now, certain measurements is tough to take when somebody sits. For example, uh, the circumference around his uh, trochanters, which is almost just right in line with the symphysis pubis. His hips are going to flex here, so that one's going to be a little bit more tough. But we can definitely focus in on the waist and the xiphoid, uh, things of that nature. We, so we can only do what we can do, and we'll, 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 it'll all come together that way anyways. Okay, so Bob, let's have a seat here real quick, if you don't mind. It's on the side there. Great. Okay, so this is going to play into our seated uh, TLSO application. Okay, so we're going to go around Bob right here. This first measurement is 47 and three quarters currently in the seated posture. We could even say 48 if he inhales a little bit. So we'll say 48 when Bob is sitting down at the waistline, which is the iliac crests. We will also take a xiphoid circumference that's 44 and a half and we're going to also take his his ASI circumference that's probably the only circumference I could get um, without it being at an angle so I'm just going to try to verify where his ASIS is here that is 
45 and 3 quarters. So this is our seated posture with Bob. He's 45 and 3 quarters. We're not squeezing too hard. We're just coming up and just touching either side. So right now for his ASIS is 15 inches. Okay. We'll go up here and do his waist. His waist is 15 and a half. So 15 at the ASIS, 15 and a half at the waist. We'll do his xiphoid is about 15 and an eighth. Now for this posture, the, the two big things that happen are the patient sits, they get shorter, okay? Um, we touched on this earlier in the video. Uh, they get shorter, but if we're all, we'll say, for example, the volume, where is it going to go? It's got to, the person's not going to lose weight all of a sudden when they sit. So it's got to go somewhere, right? So when he sits, or any person really sits, their circumferences get larger, especially in the abdomen, okay? So he gets shorter and the circumferences increase, okay? Um, so we're going to take some, some height measurements here, and that's really going to uh, come into play. So Bob's just sitting naturally, okay? Just imagine a person that's in the hospital and they're in pain. They just had a major surgery or a minor surgery even. They're tired. They just woke up. Whatever it is, uh, they might not even sit this straight. But for this, for this example, uh, we'll have Bob, uh, let's see. That is 14 inches currently. Let's see. Maybe about 13 and 3 quarters. I'm just checking our iliac crests here to make sure we're in line still, and we are. So we have 13 and 3 quarters as the height. And we'll say 6 here. This measurement. Uh, could be one to be debated about because if the circumferences here get bigger, then the distance it has to travel might also get bigger. But we'll do a sternal notch to a symphysis pubis comparison later and it'll make more sense. But for right now, we'll just do this at six inches. Okay. All right, as we mentioned earlier, Bob's an anatomy teacher. He was at the collegiate level uh, for anatomy. So when we say to Bob, Bob, where's your symphysis pubis? There's no doubt in his mind. He knows right where that is. Okay. So we're going to put the zero at the symphysis pubis in the seated posture. Okay. And then we're going to measure out what that means from the symphysis pubis all the way up to the sternal notch. So let's go ahead and do that. If you don't mind, please, Bob. Okay. And we're going up to the sternal notch. I have it, maybe, if I'm going to really nitpick, I'm going to say 19 and 7 eighths, we could say it's 20. We'll say 20 inches uh, for that length measure. We're just going to record that right now. I just, we want you to come back later and feel like, you know, this is transparent and we're not just telling you the measurements are different. So now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to have Bob stand. Okay, we'll take our key measurements that way. Okay, so we'll start at any of our points. We just got to make sure we do the same measurements. So Bob in a standing posture right here is 43 and a half standing at his xiphoid. Okay, here comes another measurement. This right here is 46 inches at Bob's waist. The coming in from the side here, we're just going to make sure our stockinette did not move. We're going to take a circumference at his anterior superior iliac spine. That is, if the camera can see it or not, it's 43. I'm actually upside down, but it's 43 and a half. Since we couldn't take the comparison between the, the at this level before, we'll leave it off. Um, our length measurements are now different. Okay, so we'll just do that real quick. So sternal notch for Bob, down to the waist, this marker moved, so his, you agree that's your stroll notch up here, Bob? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that is 16 and a quarter with Bob standing. 
I'm going to find your xiphoid. Here it is. This moved as well, okay? So just slightly. That's why we double check when as uh, the body changes, so does, so does our land markers if you move. So right now that's at 7, and I'm just going to double check that. Okay, our, my fingers are basically in line. We could say even six and three quarter. Okay, um, so we'll do that. Six and three quarter for the height measurement there. And then also, Bob, if you'll do the honors on this one, um, symphysis pubis. And so as you can see, the, it all shifted, this, this stockinette that we used. So he has it, not at the line, but below it. And he's putting it in the correct spot. So we'll come all the way back up here now. Here's his sternal notch. Okay. I have 25 for his sternal notch in the standing position. So we got those measurements. We're going to now finish off Bob's standing measurements. And we're going to take three mLs of Bob at the places that we've done our circumferences. So the ML for Bob at his ASIS in standing is 14 and a half. It's 15 and a quarter in standing and it is 14 and 5 eighths at the xiphoid. Bob's in his last position that we're comparing, okay? So Bob is in supine position and we're going to measure our circumferences at the ASIS, the waist, and the xiphoid. Then we're also going to do our MLs from side to side in the supine position, and then we'll do our height differences. Okay, so let's just do that real quick. The circumference for Bob at the ASIS is... 44. Our circumference for Bob is 44 and a quarter at the waist. Okay. So the circumference at the xiphoid process, I'm a little high right there, the xiphoid is it's a little bit twisted, but basically it is 43 and 5 eighths. 43 and 5 eighths. I'm going to grab our ML gauge. The ASIS ML is 15 and a half. We'll say 14 and 7 eighths at the waist and 15 at the xiphoid. So essentially 15 and both. But we'll do 14 and 7 eighths and 15. Now our heights are going to come into play again as well. I'm going to come over here. All right, Bob, if you'll do the honors on this. Uh, let me start over just for a second. Okay, so we have, he put the, uh, the distal aspect of this tape measure at his symphysis pubis. Now we're going to go all the way up. And, wow. Okay, so when he is supine, sternal notch to the symphysis pubis is 26 and a half, which is already more than it was in standing, but we'll go over that in a minute. And we'll take our other shorter measurements here. So we'll go now from the waist. I'm going to find his waist here. Waist to xiphoid is 6 again. So that's the same. And waist to sternal notch is 16 and a half. Now let's take our three charts that we just created and compare them side by side. 
So we're just going to, let's analyze our diagrams. This is Bob's seated picture and the measurements we could take of Bob in the seated posture where the circumference is at his ASIS, his waist, and his xiphoid. The MLs we could also take, okay, so this number says 45 and 3 quarters. The waist, that's the ASIS. The waist is 48. The xiphoid is 44 and a half. Okay, let's compare those numbers, just those three numbers, to what Bob is when he stood. So he's 45 and 3 quarters when he sits at his ASIS. Over here we have Bob standing. He is 43 and a half at his ASIS when he's standing. At his waist, he's 46, and if you compare that to his waist when he sits, that's 48. So that's a two inch difference just right there. It is a two and a quarter inch difference at the ASIS. His xiphoid is a little less of a difference, but it's still a difference. And it, we have 44 and a half with the seated position at the xiphoid for a circumference. And when the person stands, we have 43 and a half. So that was, that was an inch difference, which is significant when our goal is to help make sure a brace is snug. Now, in the supine position, we actually have Bob's ASIS as 44, which is actually a larger circumference right here. Uh, the waist, however, is, is different again. So Bob's standing circumference at the waist, which is two inches smaller than it is in the seated position, again, almost reduces in size by two inches. So we went from, there's a four inch difference from the seated to the supine posture, okay, uh, position. And the xiphoid overall doesn't change too much from the standing to the supine. But we can also point to the ASIS difference. When Bob is seated, we have 45 and 3 quarters down to 44 in circumference in the supine position. So that's a difference of almost 2 inches. So we changed 4 inches at our waist and almost 2 inches at the ASIS in terms of circumference. And you can only imagine what that means for a brace. If you put the brace on in the seated position, okay, the person stands up, they get smaller, then the brace can migrate up and down, okay, then they go back to the seated posture, it can migrate up, and that's when you can see, you know, a brace migrate up into the axillary region here or into the neck like we saw earlier. Now that's just the circumferences. When Bob is sitting, his sternal notch to his symphysis pubis was 20. When he stood, his sternal notch to his symphysis pubis was 25. And when he was supine, it went to 26 and a half. So that is from Bob in a seated posture to Bob in a supine posture is, 20, is six and a half inches difference. Now, people don't usually wear their braces when they are laying down. So it might be more accurate to compare Bob standing to Bob sitting. Um, so if we have a brace that looks good on Bob um, in a standing position, if we want to help keep Bob more straight, you know, there is an argument that can be made that if he's longer, if he's straighter in the standing position or in the supine position, if we want to keep him more straight, we might want to try to put that brace on in those two positions versus putting it on in a seated posture where he's shorter and in a relaxed posture, in which we called that X minus Y in the video.